European Union is a very useful scapegoat for all mistakes that were made on a national level. You just blame the Brussels. And in a way, as it is so remote from everyday life, it's um, very appealing for goes into your ears that, oh yeah, we did everything we should, but the Brussels is the guilty one. We had this discussion, discussion as well in Slovenia, so-called Troika. So, because we overspent, there will be ugly Brussels to be blamed. First of all, the country should done or should do its homework at home. Um, I agree much what uh, Sarit said regarding the architecture or the measures. As well, not um, respecting the um, mastery criteria regarding the debts. It's in a way understandable if everybody are indebted and if you are indebted at the time when you are signing the treaty, it's in a way difficult to expect that everybody would work. So this is kind of vision what the European Union would like to achieve. So in a way, cynicism and uh, that, sh that is aimed at the European Union, I think, should be better focused on the on the on the national government because they are the one to give you better living condition. They are the one to offer you prosperity. I remember Tony Blair when he was discussing the European social model in 2005 in the European Parliament in his introductory speech when the uh, United Kingdom took the presidency in the second half of 2005. He said, how can we be proud in the uni unity when there is 20 million uh, uh, people without work. How can we be proud? There are ten, nine years after we added seven million more. In the meantime, India in the last six years um, improved or rise for one third, China for 70 percent. And in a way, when you are facing with such downhill figures, there is a fertile ground for extremism, for cynical view, for blaming the Brussels, but at the very essence it's still the member state that should uh, give uh, or establish or produce the right policies to develop of the, of the state. And if I'm cutting down my long list of faults of Western governments, and I would agree with one of the previous speakers, it's not really mistakes or errors made in Brussels. No, they are made in national capitals, in places like Berlin or, pa or Paris or Ljubljana. And here, the main mistake which has been made, and I want to make it into a one-liner, so that you can understand what I believe to be the core problem of Western civilization. It's a lack of fiscal rectitude. And this is rooted in democracy. Let me give you an anecdote. I remember a discussion in Germany where one of our political scientists adv advertised democracy and how well run our countries are. And then a young Chinese lady stood up. She was in her 20s, according to her looks, maybe in her 30s, but let's say half as old as me. And she said, why should I be in favor of democracy? According to my observation of the Western world, democracy means nothing more than overburdening my generation for the benefit of your generation. The speaker was about as old as I am. And there is some truth in this kind of argument. And I think we should not buy the propaganda of our politicians 
that the extremism of the powerless is the main problem. No, the extreme lack of fiscal rectitude of our governing politicians is the main problem. Our politicians should accept some responsibility and the only way to do it is of course that we as voters overcome what public choice theorists call rational ignorance. And rational ignorance is called rational ignorance because all of us know that a well-informed vote does not make much difference. I happen to live in a country where around 50 million people have the right to vote. What is the weight of my vote? It's unlikely to have any impact. For some perverse reasons, I have always been more interested in politics than in football. But most other Germans feel the other way around. And so they are totally uninformed. And as long as Angela Merkel succeeds in hiding the problems which the next generation is likely to face, she is returned to office. So I do think what is really important is that people, especially young people, overcome ignorance because politicians are forcing the bill onto them. And I think it is your self-interest to fight against the current generation of policymakers because they are really persistent in disregarding the interests of your generation. And you have to face up to the fact that your opponents are governing you. And unless you act on that, there is no hope for a better future. This last, um, in a way, um, opinion I can see as uh, a way to, to encourage young people to go into politics and start to uh, include or uh, go into decision-making circuits because the generation and the politicians change when there is a new way or new round of young um, acknowledged, uh, very uh, wide open uh, uh, personalities enter into the politics and takes the triggers or takes the uh, how to say uh, power to, to take a decision that will have an, uh, an effect on the, on, the, on the different level of taking a decision. If you start thinking about the European institutional setup, I think you should start with an image of human nature. And I want to characterize human nature with one line. Human beings are fallible. What follows from this simple fact? I think we want many people to commit small errors which can be easily corrected rather than a few powerful people who make big errors which are hard to correct. And this implies that we should try to push as little power to the European level as possible. I do think it makes sense, for example, to push some responsibility for defense to the European levels. Because not only Slovenia, even a country like Germany or France by now has become too small for defending itself. So there would be a case for some kind of European Union. But there is no reasonable case for building a European transfer union. There is no advantage for redistributing money at a higher level. At a, it's, it doesn't make sense to generate bigger collectives. 
And this is what our politicians do. So, here we have another kind of government extremism. They favor more and more planning and regulation exactly in those fields where we don't need it. In defense, for example, the European, I'm tempted to say, simply does not exist except at the verbal level. We pay some diplomats, that's all. And it impresses nobody, least of all, Mr. Putin. Yeah, I have to slightly disagree. I, I agree with the main point that we don't have uh, functional defense policy within the European Union. I agree with that part. On the other hand, uh, in this global market, we have, uh, I, I kind of describe one president coming from US, another one from China, the third one from Russia. We have one from India, Brazil. And who do we have in European Union? And that, that's the big problem for European Union. We have one rompe uh, with nice car. <laughs> and Ficus, we say. With many windows in his office. Because I think this is the uh, uh, way how to, how, to, how to measure power within the Brussels, the number of the windows and the size of them. Uh, and this is a big problem also in, uh, from an economic perspective. But uh, on the other hand, uh, of course, and in practice, what that means, you mentioned yourself, uh, Mr. Putin. Uh, the problem is, I'm not a, a strong apologist of strong European Union, let me be clear about that. But on the other hand, I think the problem is uh, that we don't have, or if we have a kind of common agreement about policy toward Russia, when our leaders come back to home, to Berlin, France, uh, to Paris, to the London, Slovenia, uh, then they go in front of the cameras and there's something else as they discussed or decided together in, in Brussels because they got phone probably from one of Putin's aide, not him, uh, but himself anyway. Uh, so, and this is a big problem for European Union. And what is the solution to that? And I'm trying, still trying to figure that out how to solve this problem. Uh, but I think that on, uh, in economic terms, uh, Europe should do better uh, on the Brussels level. Taking part in summits, I think it's not so important. It's important that we understand that politics is more important in raising obstacles to prosperity than promoting it. And our politicians try to generate the wrong impressions about the merits of what they do. I do think the best politicians can do is to commit less mistakes. And that will be better politics. That will be more freedom for all of us to commit our own errors. And that means we have a chance to learn by trial and error. And because most of us are not powerful enough to resist learning. Politicians, unfortunately, are. And that's why I'm so pessimistic about politics in general and European politicians especially.